How's it going everyone? My name is Ty Williams and today I am going to be showing you all um, a slideshow that highlights my statement of ethics, my personal sort of ethical viewpoint. And I'm going to start off with a brief introduction um, with my central thesis, break down sort of early developmental years, influences on my life, role models, sort of take you through changes that have gone on, um, and then really look at currently where I'm at as a collegiate member of the University of Delaware and then where I think that this ethical viewpoint will lend and serve me in the professional world and sort of tie things up um, and close everything out towards the end. Without further ado, again, let's start it off with an introduction. Um, so I'm really going to talk a little bit about balance a lot today and balance as it pertains to sort of what you have going on in your life um, between your involvements but also your personality, how you balance and sort of adapt your personality to the situations that you're in, and also how you balance the energy that you put things into. You know, some things need more energy at certain times than others, and that's all something that you need to be, I believe, self-aware of. And, and so again, I think balance is really a cornerstone of how I, I try to live my life. I think sometimes people can look at um, the things that they have going on in their life and get very complacent. And in my opinion, I think the most successful people in life are those who can find success through balance and sort of handle things with, with grace. And so with all that being said, I think this parallels very well with my ethical viewpoint, which is social contract theory. Um, social contract theory, it shares the core assumption of egoism. You know, we are all um, self-interested and rational individuals but also justifies and explains how living in a society requires a, a set of rules um, for social cooperation and in coordination with everyone. And so we'll transition a little bit to role models and how this sort of pertains to that central thesis. And I would easily say um, that my parents have done an incredible job of raising me. Um, we'll get into sort of um, the elements that come into play there on the next slide. But just to give a brief overview, I think a lot of my familial dynamics have really come with, you know, maintaining obedience and behavior, but obviously in a very healthy way. And, and with that, I mean, trust comes into play. And my parents have always valued things like hard work, things like honesty. Um, and so I think having been raised on that and, and wanting to always give that back, you you always uphold it. And I think that's something I continue to do in order to, to make them proud. Um, but obviously there are other individuals who I believe hold similar ethical viewpoints that have influenced who I become today. And those include Donald Glover, Kendrick Lamar, and Conan O'Brien. And I could talk about all three of these individuals for a very long time, but to really highlight, I think like the core elements of who they are, starting with Donald Glover, he's an actor, a comedian, a director. Um, he is really a, a jack of all trades and he's a mus musician too. Um, these all come into play because I'm someone and I, and I value this within him, someone who doesn't look at themselves as someone who's just put in one box, someone who can do a lot and put a lot of their own self-interest into a lot of different things and in turn get a lot out of it. Someone like a Kendrick Lamar looks at introspectively who they are as a person and their, their impact on others um, within society. And I think that lends more to the altruistic aspects of social contract theory. And, and same with Conan O'Brien, someone whose sole purpose is to make people laugh and to be a friend. Um, I think breaking down those barriers and you know, cooperating with others in that sense lends to the altruistic values. But again, you can't deny that someone in that position selfishly feels good and, and earns money. And there's so many elements of all that selfishly impacts them. And as I talked about, so really looking at my early years and my mindset, I think you can look at Maslow's hierarchy and needs as a perfect example. Um, growing up, as I've talked about, my, my household was quite great. And there was really nothing I could complain about in that sense. Um, but, you know, as you get older, you look at things like esteem and self-actualization and you try to discover that. And I think when I was younger, there was always a fear of failure. 
a fear of letting others down, but I think in a very healthy way, I've kind of translated those fears into, you know, being the best version of myself um, and getting involved and always, you know, recognizing that while I don't need to be perfect, I can always strive to be good and be great. Um, and so I think, you know, feeding the ego is only natural. And there's obviously the good feelings that come with compliments and eliminating sort of the bad out of your life. But that comes with sort of understanding what you need and gaining that self-confidence and gaining that self-esteem as you get older. And the turning point really came with running and golf in my high school years. I think this was a really, you can look at the dichotomy, the sort of yin and yang. Um, running's altruistic values are very clear. It's a team sport. It's something where I felt like I need to give as much as I can and run as hard as I possibly can for my team, for the six other guys I'm running this three mile course with. Um, and sort of conversely, I think with golf, you look at that as something that really feeds into the ego and, you know, you're your biggest fan, but you're also your harshest critic. And same goes for the people you're out there with, whether it's with all the compliments you're given or the status at being at a country club like that, feeding the, the ego um, in that sense. And I, as I've mentioned, I think a lot of things changed when it just came to going to college and maximizing my opportunity, taking on new challenges. Professionally, I've always been yearning um, for the privilege to work at an organization. And the internship search is something where things like the status and ego come into play. When you look at all these incredible organizations and how you would feel to be able to work at them. Um, obviously, that for me is something that I want to do and something that I would love to achieve. But I also recognize that organizations like Alpha Cap Psi and U Dance have really given me the altruistic elements that, you know, allow me to share with others the interpersonal sort of conflicts that arise, but also solve them in a very healthy way. And I think this, again, transitions quite well to the problem solving that I learned in all of these professional um, elements as the PGA tournament operations, really sort of adapting um, my skills as a problem solver with Riverwinds, sort of giving back to others up the course. And then as a tour guide for a college of business, I know that this is important. And again, just to close things out, there's a central theme of pluralism within social contract theory. You can't have too much without having the other. And the most successful people in life and in sport are going to be the people that can recognize that balance. Thank you. Have a great night.